Welcome to the County Connection Show. It is May, uh, tail end of May, and uh, I am your host, Scott Vargo. I'm joined by Commissioners Dan Gibbs, Thomas Davidson, and Karn Stiegelmeyer. So uh, welcome everybody uh, to the show. We want to talk about um, health care and the Affordable Care Act and some of the implications that that has had within Summit County and some big uh, changes that are underway as a result of uh, some uh, some lobbying and some pressure and some discussion coming from the county commissioners. So, who <laughs> wants to start, start it off? You. I'll start it off. So, the county, we just recently learned, I'll start with some really great news, and that the state decided um, to help us out, more or less, and we teamed up with Summit County, Eagle, Garfield, and Picking Counties, the most expensive region in the state, known as Region 11, and really, we really worked hard together to, to kind of remedy the challenge that we have with, with the highest healthcare costs in Colorado and in the nation. <laughs> and our goal was really um, to help bring prices down, of course, but um, we had success. You know, we just learned later on, uh, just yesterday, that, uh, that we will go back to a geographic map rating area of having seven metropolitan statistical areas and two non metropolitan statistical areas that will more or less take us back to what we, what we had before, before the Affordable Care Act passed. And this is the, the configuration that, that we have had um, before this more recent um, change. And the, the most recent change looks, takes us out of Region 11 and puts us in the whole Western Slope area minus Grand Junction area. So we're gonna be part of a larger risk pool area instead of having just four counties within that risk pool so we've all been working extremely hard on this and it's just a very exciting day to say the least that that um, we've been able to achieve this change so somebody talk a little bit about uh, the process that uh, that way that everybody went through to get to this point yeah so um, as part of the affordable care act it was the responsibility of the state to figure out um, uh, how it would work how the federal uh, Affordable Care Act would work um, at the state level and uh, Commissioner of Insurance prior to the current one um, took input from the insurance industry and did a very quick turnaround and sent something off to the feds without really I think understanding what that would mean once it was all said and done and as Dan pointed out you know we had the dubious distinction this this four county area of being the most expensive place in the United States to, for people to sign up for the Affordable Care Act if they were above 400% federal poverty rate. And there are lots of people in Summit County that are above 400% federal poverty rate. And so uh, it was a real uh, eye-opener, um, unhappy eye-opener for us when we realized what was going on. And you know we've had incredible uh, cooperation from all of our different partners here in the county on this. Lots of meetings with folks from Centura, the Community Care Clinic, the Family and Intercultural Resource Center, Northwest COG, everybody that was involved with regards to how does the Affordable Care Act work, why are the prices so high, and what do we do about this. And um, it was an extremely steep hill to convince the state to go back and change these maps that they had already put in place. And I'm very, very um, uh, 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 surprised still, I guess, that we got this done. Um, the commissioners from Garfield, Pitkin, Eagle, and Summit all worked very closely together. We all um, really made our voices heard together. We had lots of people in our four counties uh, submit comments to the Division of Insurance about needing to make these changes. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I remember, so this is interesting. Dan got us audience with uh, one of the governor's right-hand man. And we sat down and talked with him about what we needed. And um, the senior analyst, right, that works on healthcare, is we're describing what we think needs to happen. Is just sitting there going, <laughs> "I can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that." 
<laughs> we walked out of that meeting that day and I'm like, oh my God. Uh, but we got it done. So there's more work still to be done. Uh, there's a lot more that we still want to do with all of our different partners, uh, whether they're providers, insurers, or whoever else, as to you know, why did we end up with these extremely high rates and what is it that we need to do going forward uh, so that the Affordable Care Act actually is affordable care. But this is the first huge win for us, and I never thought we were going to get it. So it really is exciting. We heard just yesterday or t this morning that the feds approved the changes that the state requested. So um, anyway, it's really great to have a commissioner that used to be a state senator and a state rep and uh, <laughs> is good friends with people in the governor's office to, <laughs> to, to, I mean, I think that Karn and I both admire very much everything that you did, Dan. So good, good job. It was an amazing team effort. and. And I want to thank the community too. I mean, mm -hmm. it was such a, a quick turnaround mm -hmm. and the folks that helped with, believe it or not, the social media, I think really helped out a lot. The, the Twittering, the Facebook, the, the Summit Daily News, the uh, Crystal 93, KSMT, I mean, all the radio, everyone worked together to get the news out to say, hey, we only have a few days to, to lend our comments to the state yeah. on, on why this proposed change makes sense for our area. And so we've all received, you know, hundreds and hundreds of emails and letters and hearing stories that really um, the current configuration was just not working for, for yeah. our middle class in particular right. here in Summit County. And so Marguerite Salazar received over 300 letters and, um, and the majority of those were very, very positive uh, regarding this change of map. So, so thank you Summit County for stepping up and and helping us out too. So it's one thing for mm -hmm. us to, to say, hey, we need to make change, we need to make change, and our community is demanding this, but for the community to step up and say, hey, we got your back, yeah. and let me tell you a story and, and how this impacts me and my family, that's what I thought was really, really meaningful. Right. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, you know, kudos also to um, the Family and Intercultural Resource Center and Northwest COG, because those are the two entities that work on actually reaching out and explaining to people um, how to sign up for the Affordable Care Act. And um, we have some of the highest um, participation rates uh, for this, particularly because of the people that are below 400% federal poverty rate who did qualify for tax credits under the old, old maps. Um, but. Um, Tamara and everybody um, at the Family and Intercultural Resource Center um, and in conjunction with Northwest COG have done a really good job in this area of reaching out and getting people to sign up for um, health insurance. So, um, you know, lots, lots of kudos to lots of different people um, and um, more work still to be done and we've got good partnerships, we've got a good um, sort of working group. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, Paul Chetkowski from the hospital and Sarah Vane from the community care clinic and just an incredible group of people that are going to work on what more do we need to do, what additional information do we need to gather, how do we make sure that as we go forward this really works for people in our community. So. Yeah, it's important to note, I think, that, that although the costs are expected to go down, we don't have any of those details yet. The, the insurers need to still submit their rate plans and their premiums. Those are changes that will go into effect January 1st of 2015. Mm -hmm. But the expectation is that the rates will go down from the, the high numbers, the high, high numbers that we've been seeing. Uh, but there is still going to be a difference. There's still going oh, yeah. to be a higher cost of care for our region than for the Denver metro area, as another example. And so there's work to be done within Summit County with, uh, with the hospital, with the local mm -hmm. providers, with the care clinic, uh, to try to identify ways that, that those costs can be brought down within Summit County, as well as region-wide. And so we need to be considering all of that uh, as we go forward. And so like Thomas said, there's a work group around that. Mm -hmm. um, there are already some conversations that are going on between some insurance providers, mm -hmm. as well as some of the um, healthcare providers within the county to see what can be done around some of those subjects. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know the insurance companies have, I believe until June 15th mm -hmm. um, to get to the state in terms of what 
they can bring to the table and right. what the rates will look like. And, and again, yeah, January 1st is what yep. will really kick in. So, yep. so it's not going to be overnight, but. No, but uh, great progress and certainly an unexpected uh, victory, I think, because mm -hmm. going into this, the expectation was when we were first hearing back from the state that there was nothing they could do, that, the, that any change they made was going to negatively impact other groups. And so they weren't really interested in going down that well, path. Well, they started, they started by telling us, we're going to study this for two years, yeah. right? Yeah. We're like, no, yeah. <laughs> we don't want two years for you to study this. We've got to do something. Yeah. So kudos to all of you guys for keeping the pressure on, on yeah. that one. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. We're going to talk about uh, health care in the form of ambulances um, and other stuff. Welcome back to the County Connections for May. Uh, we just talked a little bit about health care and some cost containment efforts by the county commissioners uh, here as well as in the region. Uh, we're going to talk now about some other efforts that are ongoing around another health care related issue that we have here um, on a very local level, and that's our ambulance service. So as we've talked about in the past, uh, Summit County's ambulance service is, is all but fully fee driven, so patient fees. The county has recently had to start to subsidize that operation uh, and we've been uh, having some ongoing discussions with other emergency service providers within the community to see how we might be able to streamline those operations. So who wants to talk about um, what's a, a pretty significant change in our system with the inclusion of red, white, and blue? So I think the first thing that we need to explain to everybody is, you know, in terms of background, um, Summit County's ambulance system has been beating the odds for a number of years in terms of being able to operate off of its fees alone uh, until we recently stepped in uh, to fill the shortfall with general fund dollars. The ambulance system in Summit County had not been, has not been supported by taxpayers. It's been operated on only its fees and nobody around us has been able to operate under that model for a number of years and so we have been beating the odds but there are a number of factors that uh, are in play that just prohibit that business model from working in the future and um, boy this has been a difficult one I think um, uh, very, very proud of our ambulance staff and our team, and they do an outstanding job. And I think it's been difficult for them as we've struggled with these financial challenges. And so um, I think the first thing that we want to say is thank you to that staff. And uh, we know that this has not been easy for you guys, and we appreciate your patience as we work through some really difficult stuff. Um, the good news is that we have fire districts with um, resources and a willingness to partner with us and uh, we've recently gotten um, a partnership started with Red, White and Blue around how we provide um, EMS services and we're hoping to be able to expand that um, with Lake Dillon and Copper as well. Um, and you know, this is a project that Dan, you're particularly working on with those guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really exciting, I think, to have this partnership. I mean, you have our Summit County ambulance staff that are highly qualified and trained that are paramedics and, and EMTs, and, and then you have the firefighters too, and many of them have very similar, if not identical, credentials of being EMTs and paramedics, but um, really inserting their expertise into the red, white, and blue um, um, uh, region of, um, of their taxing authority um, where they're taking first call 911s, we're looking at co-housing opportunities where um, our EMS staff would be um, living um, more or less in the fire station with other um, firefighters and training together. Um, and there are many other components of that as well, but but you know, just just think of you know if you have a catastrophic event in the area, more people that are trained using the same expertise and, and how you're originally trained, whether it's paramedic or EMT, I think it's a real win for our community um, to really have um, people utilizing the skills that they're trained to have already. Yeah, the, you know the challenging thing you 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 have to provide ambulance trips to people that need ambulance trips regardless of whether they have an ability to pay for that ambulance trip or not. And currently, 
um, uh, the easy way to say this is for every 10 trips that we provide, there are uh, four people that don't pay us at all for the trip. And that simply is not sustainable. And, you know, it's certainly our belief right now that even with a partnership with the fire districts, there is still a funding gap. And over time, in years to come, this funding gap funding gap grows dramatically. There is going to have to be a way that we figure out as a community how to supplement this system in order to continue to provide high quality service. And boy, given, given our local economy and its basis on a lot of active recreation and the trips that come from that, we have to have a high quality ambulance service. And so, you know, for us, I think it just makes all the sense in the world that we figure out how we partner with these fire districts. Um, we've got lots of examples in Summit County of how different agencies uh, show up with their respective resources, their respective funding, and work together to do a really good job. And that's what we hope to accomplish with the fire districts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our own staff. Car? So it's been a lot of work to get to this point and it's really important to us to see this partnership growing but even as we insert more resources into the system it's clear that we still don't have the funding gap solved mm -hmm. and the collections being at about 60 percent is crazy if you think how a business operates you would never operate a business like that but that's what this was an enterprise fund that's supposed to operate uh, what fee for service and when we look into the future we're seeing those collections by a lot of different um, inputs and looking at future uh, pay models we're seeing that go down to and we're maybe not unique there right oh not at all we've we've been the outlier where we've been able to have really good collections that 60 percent is really <laughs> good <laughs> nationally people don't understand how we can do such a good job uh, but we can see clearly down the road that that's going to be dropping as well. So even as we partner more in the future, uh, we're not going to be able to solve the funding gap. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the even more difficult component of that is the activity level within ambulance is actually on the rise. So we're seeing more activity and yet the collection rate continues to decline and so the gap actually gets larger uh, even though we're seeing more activity, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, we certainly have an uphill battle there. Yeah. And, uh, and we're fortunate, though, to have some um, partners within the county that have some resources. And it's trying to work through how do those resources best fit into the system mm -hmm. and how can we get uh, take full advantage of that uh, within the community. Um, all right. So the uh, second item we wanted to talk about in this um, segment is completely unrelated. Uh, so I have no good segue, which is terrible. I usually try to have a segue, but I have nothing for this one. So we we're going to talk about you. <laughs> we're going to talk about summer school and uh, the after school activities in that program uh, is called Catch, which I think we've talked about in the past. But who wants to talk about the new summer school programming that uh, that is going to be taking place? I'm yeah. Sorry. So. Um, <laughs> A coordinated approach to coordinator catch stands for coordinated approach to children's um, health. health. Children's oh. health, Children. right? <laughs> and uh, this is a program that we worked with uh, Sign School and the Family and Intercultural Resource Center, uh, Summit County government uh, funding from the Summit Foundation, um, and we've had this program underway in the Breck Center. In the Breck. Breck Thank you, Breckenridge Recreation a Center. A model of partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, great partnership uh, funded by the Summit Foundation in part. And um, this summer in coordination with some funding from the school district, as well as some funding from the county's Right Start program, mm -hmm. we are going to be providing um, summer school for uh, those children that um, need some additional help with reading and literacy. Mm -hmm. Is that the yep. right way to describe that? Yep. So the school district will be responsible for identifying those children, 
giving them invitations. That's already underway, well underway up in Breckenridge and uh, we're getting that going for the program down in Silverthorne as well. And um, uh, I think that this is something that we hope to see uh, grow in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'll watch closely for good results from helping those children. Um, but this is, this is partially uh, funding that the school district has through the federal READ Act, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in any case... So we um, expect it to be ongoing, uh, at least to some degree. It, there, there's some uh, component of this being a pilot uh, and understanding how it works, but we expect actually that the funding will continue at the school level and they'll be able to continue to offer uh, programs. And so I yeah. think you mentioned that it's in Breckenridge, but it's serving uh, more than Breckenridge and more than just the Silverthorne Elementaries. Yeah. Or, We've got what for Breckenridge, it's the Breckenridge area as well as, as Frisco. The the students from those elementary schools will all be invited to the the program that the Breck, Breck the Breckenridge Recon Recreation <laughs> Center <laughs> helps provide this summer, and then we'll have uh, another program that Summit Cove and Silverthorne goes to at Silverthorne. Um, Dillon Valley has its own program in the summertime, and then hmm. Oh, so the one interesting thing about this is the school district had funding for only a few days of the week, and it's the county funding that is going to step in so that this works uh, another two days of the week, mm -hmm. even three, if people opt for that. So what we're trying to do is provide a summer school, summer school schedule that actually works for people that go to work five days a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's also really essential for kids um, whether they're at reading level or not, there's been a lot of research on the problem with summer vacation, and that is that kids uh, end up coming back in the fall and they've lost a lot of the skills that they had in the spring. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a good bridge there. Mm -hmm. We've seen a tendency around the country and here as well to stretch out the school year, and in some places there's year-round school with breaks in between. And this is another way to bridge that gap and uh, gain back some of that loss of learning that has been happening. Mm -hmm. Well, um, a great effort by a lot of different entities involved. Um, you know, we, we, we got the information from the school district, what, only recently that mm -hmm. they had this opportunity. And again, a lot of people, um, our youth and family department, the Family and Intercultural Resource Center, um, a number of people, you know, jumped really quick and really fast to figure out, okay, how can we make this work well this summer? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think we're there, and we'll watch how it goes this summer, and uh, given good results, then it's something that we hope to grow into the future. Yeah, I think it's great that the, uh, the program started as catch with the after-school activities. Uh, that group was charged with looking at uh, putting together materials, the, the sort of informational materials around what summer programs were available. Um, the school district then initiated this idea of some of the summer school programming. Mm -hmm. That same catch group got together and talked about can they build on some days. So again, great, great collaboration, great partnership over a very short period of time pulling something together. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how that goes and expect that hopefully it goes smoothly and that next year that it can expand even, even more. Right. So, all right, we'll take another break. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll talk about wood chippers. Welcome back to our final segment of the County Connection show for May. Uh, perhaps my swan song as host of this uh, wonderful program. Uh, you're not going to get out of it that way, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. Not if I did nope. it on TV, it might nope. stick. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, so I'm your host, Julie Souter. Uh, <laughs> joined by her county commissioners, Karn, Thomas, and Dan. Uh, so I'll be back next time as well. G grant success uh, that's related to uh, wood chipper. Yeah, Summit County, we we're a recipient of a grant that was through the state of Colorado through the Department of Natural Resources, and it was a 50-50 grant. So we pitched in half of it, and the funds came from more or less wildfire mitigation mm -hmm. funds. And the state grant said you could use these funds from everything from, you know, defensible space projects to, um, in some cases, you know, uh, fire apparatus um, or, you know, chippers in area that, that the goal would be to reduce 
um, you know, fires and, and kind of hazardous trees around where people live. Mm -hmm. And so we got the grant and the program will start in early July and we're, it's going to be countywide. And so you'll hear a lot more information about it in terms of a particular area that you live in. What, what we'll be doing is um, getting the word out and folks can take their slash and trees and so forth that they've downed on their, on their uh, property, take it out to the curb. There'll be a chipper out there uh, removing um, the biomass from that particular location, taking it to um, the landfill most likely. Um, but we're also um, in, the, in the process of kind of contracting out to have an operator um, that works within the business to, to be the lead facilitator of it. And we'll so kind of help get the word out. And How much wood can a wood chipper chip if a wood <laughs> chipper can chip wood? A lot. Yeah. A lot. I don't think we have the spec sheet. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, so this is, a, of course, a voluntary program, and you don't have to participate if, if you don't want to participate, but it's really going to be a great service, I think, for our community. You know, we have um, about 156,000 acres of dead trees here in Summit County, and looking at aerial um, analysis of bark beetle activity, it looks like the bark beetle has really moved to the northeast of us. So we really have limited to no activity right now, but we still have a huge aftermath, of course. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of homeowners that have a lot of, in particular, lodgepole pines that are, that are dead. So some so. of the towns in the past have done these sorts of programs inside town limits, right? Yeah. Now, now we're going to be able to do this on a, on a bigger scale, right? Exactly. We'll be working with all the towns. So there'll be in-town projects. There'll be unincorporated Summit County projects. So yeah, what makes us really unique is this will be the first time, to my knowledge, that this would be eligible for you know, Summit County, unincorporated Summit County uh, residents. Right. So. Good. Peak seven, we're thinking of you. <laughs> That's, right. That's great. A lot of neighbors. Yeah, Peak Seven, Termigan, Wilderness. I mean, you name Some it. Code, there are a lot of bet. a lot of heavily impacted areas outside of Blue River as well. So, who will manage the program? Who? Um, well, it, it will Scott be managed. Scott Margo was going to manage. <laughs> <laughs> um, CSU Cooperative Extension will be mm -hmm. working. Uh, Dan Schroeder will be okay. working very closely within that. We have um, State Forest Service. Paul Cada will be working with us as well. Um, the fire council at the end of the day, we're really um, leaders within the fire council are really helping to have oversight over it. Paul Cada so, is perfect. already sort of part-time Summit County's guy, right? Yeah, exactly. He's so, with the State Forest Service, but we, um, we really him. encourage him to work in Summit County as much as possible. Yeah. And he's a, not only a firefighter, but a degree in forestry as well. So that combination is really great to have here. Good. So if and anybody's interested, they should contact Dan Schroeder yeah. And this is a good time to get your HOA or your non HOA neighbors together yeah. and make a plan so that you're ready to take advantage of this. Yeah, you can you can go to our Summit County website. There's a search engine. You can just type in wildfire and there'll be information um, about, um, you know, the chipper program okay. on that website. So perfect. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's switch gears a little bit from uh, from fire uh, and fire mitigation to flooding. So we've obviously had a, a historic after a fire. Yeah, quite often. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've had a historic uh, uh, snow levels throughout the course of the season, uh, with yet another foot or so earlier last week. Uh, so we're we're anticipating that if uh, if the conditions are are ripe uh, are right, that we may end up having some flooding activity. So. I, I look at you, Karn, because you live in a, a notorious flood area yes, within I Summit do. County. <laughs> I pay close attention this time of year. And flooding could happen anywhere in the county. It's just a matter of that snowpack being quickly melted mm -hmm. off and flowing into any low-lying areas. Combine so that with a stormwater event. And mm -hmm. it, like the rain that we had a couple years ago that blew out Coin Valley Road. Yep. Um, it, so it could happen anywhere in the county in low-lying areas. But there are particular areas who have a history of flooding, and I live in one of those areas, and that is below Dillon Dam. So those of you who've been down there, you've noticed this wild raging river. It's been a thousand CFS of water for about a month now flowing out of the dam. This is good cooperation with Denver Water, carefully looking at their predictions of snowpack and how much water is expected to to fill in that lowering lake. We do expect it to fill by July 1st, 
and we expect Green Mountain to fill by July 1st. Um, but we're still anticipating that warm up and all the uh -huh. spring flowers. And we're looking at very likely the first week or second week of June to be that point in time when the, we really get a big melt off. So it's just something for everyone to be aware of. We do have sandbags throughout the county. All the towns have sandbags and sand piles. And so that's your best defense. If you know you're in one of those areas, be planning ahead to get some sandbags and get your neighbors together, help your neighbors who don't have the ability to do it themselves and sandbag yourself into a safer position. And again, that information and information about some of those locations for sandbags and, and sand piles is also available on the county's website. Yeah. And you know, when you look at snowpack, I mean, it, we're, we're not as high, I think, as 93, 94, but we're very similar to 2011. Mm -hmm. And we did see some, some uh, you know, flooding in 2011. But of course, there are a lot of variables, you know, mm -hmm. how hot the nights are, right. how hot the days are. and. And how many days in a row you have whatever temperatures so let's let's hope for the best and um but we're getting prepared for for any possible situation that we might see so yeah. now, all of our road and bridge people county towns are prepared to coordinate to respond when there is an incident um, if you have flooding and you know it's happening you should take action don't wait for that reverse 911 call mm -hmm. but that would be enacted in the case of flooding. This is a good time to plug SC Alert again, right? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. so, Sign up. Um, what's the website again? You just go to the go county's ahead. website. There's a big button there that says SC Alert. Click on that and it'll take you to all the sign up. It's, uh, it's a way that we can plug in your cell phone and then start shooting you information. So um, mm -hmm. if you're new to the county or if you just haven't gotten around to this, this is a really brilliant thing to do is to get signed up for SC Alert and uh, be able to know what's going on in terms of emergencies mm -hmm. and other things like that. So, yep. Absolutely. Um, all right, uh, last subject that we wanted to cover today is related to uh, Colorado Counties, Inc. So as the past president, why don't you That's talk right. about that, Thomas? <laughs> okay. Um, Colorado Counties Incorporated is the statewide agency that represents all of the county commissioners of Colorado. Um, and I just got done last year uh, serving as the president of the organization. Um, one of the things that happened when I got onto the board of directors is we decided to start having our summer conferences here in Summit County. <laughs> Good job, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they're back again uh, here at the start of June. And uh, I think a really interesting thing that we're doing this year is we're inviting all of the county commissioners from Colorado to um, come early the first day and come see our shooting range, our free public shooting range, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, all of the different operations that we have at um, the landfill around recycling and composting and how we handle um, electronic waste disposal and hazardous House, chemical. Household hazardous waste. Household <laughs> hazardous waste disposal and all of the rest of those things. And, and composting. And composting, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so uh, wood chippers, wood chippers mm -hmm. supply the wood chips to make the compost, which we uh, then sell. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so in any case, uh, we're really excited to have all of the county commissioners visiting Summit County here at the start of June and um, are going to be really uh, proud of showing off all of the improvements that we've made at um, our shooting range. Um, as well as all of the different operations that we have at mm -hmm. SCRAP, Summit County Res Resource Res Allocation mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. SCRAP, Summit County Resource Allocation Park. So Good. Uh, anything else to add about the CCI conference? Well, hopefully, um, I mean, there will be commissioners from all over the state, so we're, we're very hopeful that they'll stay a while. Quite often they bring their families and mm -hmm. and go fly fishing or hiking and so forth. And, go to uh, the restaurants. Go to the restaurants, right. exactly. Yeah. So right. it's a really great way to showcase our community. And um, It's at Keystone, and, and they all want to fish Keystone Lake. They all see yeah. those gigantic trout in Keystone <laughs> Lake and want to, can I fish there? It's kind of like, uh... <laughs> Why don't you come see the shooting range? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought it would be a good opportunity to pitch 
um, what our, will be our gift this year at the CCI oh, conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We um, try to showcase what counties have in terms of products produced in the county. And so this year we're really highlighting our compost mm -hmm. and that's going to be our gift. And so I you think that in the past <laughs> I've liked the stuff from the distillery the and the brewery is better. But yes, but I'm sure maybe so. they put them together, right? But I'm we've sure been giving away alcohol <laughs> too long, so we thought the compost. The commissioners be are going to look at like the bag of dirt uh, and be exactly. like, "What is this? <laughs> Where's?" Uh. So I just wanted to make sure everyone knows that it is available. It is great mm -hmm. stuff. You can buy it by the bag, or you can drive up with a truck and just get a whole truckload mm -hmm. and it is amazing amazing stuff yes yeah. it is quite yeah. a bargain yes considering the soil that we have by nature in mm -hmm. the rocky mountains having some compost is a right. big plus if you want yeah. anything to grow so and uh, take shout out advantage. a shout out to the guys at uh, aaron and all of his staff at uh, scrap for figuring out a good business model yep right yep. Yeah. absolutely all right, uh, so the one last thing that I have is uh, to congratulate Dan Gibbs, mm. proud father, um, just a couple of weeks ago before this, uh, the taping here. Thank so you. So congratulations to you. you uh, I'm getting a little bit of sleep and my eyes yeah. open. <laughs> yeah, but our, our, our baby, uh, Grace Jean Gibbs, born uh, two weeks ago. So my wife and I just feel so lucky yeah. and we're, we're definitely blessed. So. Long Congrats. legs. Yeah, 21 inches <laughs> and 7.3 uh, uh, seven, 7 pounds. So uh, for the mountains, a decent size baby, oh, yeah. I think. Right. And, um, but yeah, we, we're really excited to say the least. But Congratulations. Thank you. Good for you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, if you've got any uh, show topics, questions, comments, uh, concerns about what I've said, uh, feel free to <laughs> email them to me. Give me a phone call and uh, stick around and watch some more great programming on SCTV 10.